these are my top food spots in Ibisu. So today we are in Ibisu Station and if any of you have ever been to Ibisu Station then you know that it has so many good restaurants especially ones that you're going to be dining at night. But today I kind of want to do more like a street food style video so a lot of the places that I show you today is going to be primarily places where you can just like get the food real quick and eat it even on the street. But definitely if you're looking for some night dining then this is one of the hottest places to go in Tokyo. But like always before I start if you want to see what I'm doing on daily check out my Instagram account if you want to help support the channel check out the Japan merch and if you have questions about Japan or your Japan travels then check out my Discord community. Alright let's get our street food on in Ibisu! Yeah Bisu, we're finally doing this! Just one stop away from one of Tokyo's most popular drop spots, Shibuya on the Yamanote line. Surrounded by fashionable neighborhoods like Daikanyama, Hiro, and Nakameguro, it's always ranked one of the most desirable Tokyo neighborhoods to live in. Back in the day, this area is where the Sapporo Beer Company set up shop to produce a Bisu beer. Then in 1901, a freight depot station opened up next to a Bisu beer factory, which is where the station got its name. Number 1. Cheese Egg Sandwich from Steam Bread This next shop has the meltiest egg sandwich in all of Ibisu. Let's go now! One of the more recent street food hitters from 2021, it consistently commands a line of customers fixing to get their steamed nama bread on. But to make this shop street food worthy, they've created one of the meltiest cheese omelets sandwich in between two slices of their fluffy steam bread. Alright here we go, we got the cheese omelet sandwich. You can see how drippy that is. This bread is freshly baked, you can just smell it. Oh, it smells so good, that egg is just so drippy. Let me just show you this, look at that. Look how drippy that sandwich is. Let me just peel back this wax paper and take a bite. That is phenomenal. Just look how perfect these eggs are cooked. It's nice and runny. The egg itself has the perfect amount of savoriness. This egg is just phenomenal. Look at that. Eat me. Oh, <laughs> it's dripping. That is one of the meltiest omelets I've ever had. They mix some salt, some pepper, maybe some mayonnaise as well in here. Oh, this is a melty sensation. All on this like soft, perfectly cooked bread. I really know how to make the bread here. In fact, the bread is so good that people just come here for the bread. There's always a long line. This sandwich sells out usually like just after noon. So this is one of the sandwiches that you definitely want to wake up to. Number two, matcha crepe and gelato from Gelato Peak Cafe. So this is my go-to crepe spot in a let me show you now. This shop is located inside of the Atari shopping center connected to Ibisu station. And even better, you get to watch how the crepes are made. On the crepe, they use a special French ripened butter. It's shitty. Probably butcher that one, giving it a unique flavor then topped off with a generous shaking of brown sugar. Their crepes are slightly crispy on the outside while still maintaining a fluffy inside. Ah oh, damn, crepe me already. So here we go. We are going at crepe delicious just right in front of me. I've got the dark chocolate with matcha flavor. Crepe. Ah, oh, it smells so good. Mm. That was amazing. That is a beautiful pairing. We got the dark chocolate with the matcha flavored crepe. The crepe itself has a really nice texture. So it was like on that little skillet thing that it's kind of like a little bit like crispy. They use like their French like flour batter, its own unique taste. And the thing about the crepe itself, even though it's matcha flavor, the matcha flavor isn't so strong. It's like not like super bitter or anything. It's almost just like a little hint of matcha. What's more, I guess like emphasized is like the sweetness of the crepe and the overall flavor and crispy texture to the crepe. And then I think that brown right there is kind of like a brown sugar. Like you can seriously just eat the crepe by itself. It's that good. You got the sweetness from the crepe. You got the butter on the crepe all mixed in with that dark chocolate gelato. What a flavorful combination. Number three, curry udon from Kagawa Ipuku. This next place is an award-winning Michelin udon spot. Let me take you inside. This udon shop is originally from Kagawa Prefecture, known by many as a udon lover's paradise. In fact, this shop has found a kind home in Tokyo's Michelin guidebook, so you know it's been rockin' steady. My favorites are the niku udon and the curry udon, but when I want to have it all, I throw down on the curry udon with a meat topping. The meat is a delicious mix of wagyu and U.S. beef, thigh and belly, crafted with a perfect seasoning to enhance the udon dashi. The curry itself is supervised by a French Michelin restaurant, Kitajima Te. It's an extremely 
extremely rich curry made from a beautiful wagyu dashi and veal stock, further enriched by 10 different kinds of vegetables. All right, y'all, we are at my favorite udon place and check this out. I got the curry udon. You can see just on top the butter, the onions, and then I put a little bit of tenkasu on there as well. I also got some meat here. And on top they have the katsubushi. Look how thick that curry is. Mmm, that is a strong curry taste. I love it. I just love how the udon noodles are just so bouncy. There's just so much moisture like trapped inside. It's like suck all that moisture in. This is like some of the best curry I've ever had. It's nice and thick. It has like a little bit of like spice to it as well. Butter is also a nice touch to it. And I just got the medium size. You can get a large size, but this is like a pretty filling just in itself. And then what you can also do is they give you soup. It's a strong dashi flavor. So, and you can add it to your udon just to like make it not so thick opens a whole new flavor sensation just like to eat halfway with the thick curry noodles and then change up the flavors this is some great look how tender that is let me just take a bite oh that meat is so tender and flavorful it's mixed in with some onions that will also give it some of that sweetness as well you the meat right there mixed in with the udon curry By far, this is the most impactful, flavorful curry udon I've ever had. This is like bar none, like the best I've had in Japan. Number four. Gelato from Japanese Ice Oka. This shop has its roots based in Kyoto, offering a variety of frozen flavors unique to Japanese culture, like red beans, hoji tea, karinto, and other seasonal Japanese fruits. So if you're in love with Japanese flavors as much as your frozen treats, this is an easy can't miss. Today, I'm going with their parsimon gelato atop their mochi dango. Wow, look at this mitarashi dango, and I got a sherbet on top with a parsimon flavor. There's nowhere else I've ever had where you can get parsimon flavored sherbet. In Japanese it's called kaki. So mitarashi dango if you've never had it. They have these grilled mochi balls that are super super warm and a little bit crispy from the, the grill and then you have it kind of like lathered in this kind of like soy based sweet sauce. First of all you got the sherbet right here. Look at that. Let me just take a bite. This is like a straight up parsimon flavor. It's amazing. You take the dango right here. Mm. Tanginess from the, the parsimon sherbet. Then you get the sweetness from the mitarashi dango sauce. And then you get all of that texture from the mochi balls. And this dango mochi balls are grilled right on the spot. So it's warm right now. It's super warm. What a crazy and flavorful combination. If you're trying to go for like a top that's very Japanese flavor focused, then definitely hit up this spot. So before we continue on, I wanna give a quick shout out to our regular sponsor, Boksu. If you don't already know, books to provide a gourmet experience of Japanese snacks delivered to your front door. And during the holiday season, it's a perfect gift for those in your life who love Japanese snacks and culture, especially when traveling to Japan is not as easy these days. First time users will get a Seasons of Japan box, and after that, they'll get a themed box. And from now until December 30th, you can get one of these exclusive handcrafted wooden boxes with a gold foil design made in Koga City, Japan by Masuda Kiribako. Also, for US residents, one lucky winner will get a free set of tickets to Japan. Anyone who subscribed by December 31st will be automatically entered. I'll include a link in my description so you can check out the terms and conditions and other methods of entry. Plus, you'll still get 10% off your own authentic Japanese subscription box from Boksu and save up to $47 by using my code PALO10 and link in the description. That said, let's continue on with this food tour extravaganza. Number five, Kimukatsu Sando from Ibisu Kimukatsu. So to go along with our street food adventure, this place, you can pick up a katsu sandwich. So let me show you. This shop is a popular chain katsu restaurant that's famous for their juicy milfei pork katsu. Their shop in Ibisu has a takeout window where you can order their katsu sandwich for the road. And only after the order is placed, is it made from scratch, layer by layer of thinly sliced pork wrapped in a fried panko loveliness. So here we go, we have the kimu katsu sando right there for you it comes in a little bus package 
so cute. And guess who's driving this bus? Mr. Piggy. Let's open this one up. I've been to this place so many times and I've had Uber Eats from this place as well. And they just have this little pork sandwich. Oh, you can smell that fried loveliness. Oh, it's still steamy in here. Look at that right there. Let me just take the first bite. Wow, that is marvelous. That sauce is really flavorful. So first of all, you can definitely taste that juicy, luscious pork. The meat itself, you can tell that it's been marinated a little bit. Sort of like a savoriness and a sweetness to it. And you see the pork right there, all the different layers combined in this fried outer shell. The outer shell, you can taste that it's like been heavily sauced up. Uh, I just love the combination of the, the sweetness and a little bit of like the tangy, like vinegary taste to it. You can see that the sauce is even coming off on the bread itself. And the bread is pretty good as well. It's nice and soft. It's picked up a lot of flavor from that sauce. After I've taken a few bites, I like to change up the flavor a little bit and throw some mustard on there. I think that's a little bit too much mustard, but oh well, still good nonetheless. Mm. Oh, that mustard is kicking every single bite is joy. Number six, Takoyaki from Tamayakiya. This next place takes takoyaki to a whole new level. Let me show you why. A four minute walk from the station, you can find this cute takoyaki street food van. They offer many unique fillings that you can't get at other takoyaki shops. And I thought it was super fun to show you in this video. We are taking takoyaki to a new level because this is not a regular takoyaki. It is actually a hamburger yaki, which means there's actually hamburger meat in here instead of octopus. It is very, very rare. It looks like your regular takoyaki. It has mayonnaise on top. They're like takoyaki, like sweet sauce, green onion. Mm. Oh, there you go. You have the hamburger meat right there. That is something different that you don't usually have every day. There's also a cheese sauce that I've added to this. So not only do you have like the regular takoyaki sauce mix and the mayonnaise and everything, it also has kind of a like cheese sauce. It's more like a cheese hamburger yaki since it's not taco, not, not octopus. Mm. One down and five to go. The thing about these six balls is that it's so much more filling than your regular takoyaki because there's obviously meat in here and you got these like, kind of like meatballs. Just having this alone, these six balls, was just very, very satisfying and fulfilling meal. Well, there you go. Something different for all y'all. Let's go on to the next spot. Number seven, pudding from G Ichiro. So we're in the Atare department store just above the train station and I wanted to show you this special place because you probably never had pudding like this. Let's go. This shop is also home at Ebisu Atare, especially known for its silky bum kuhen. Today, I'm gonna share with you one of my loves, their ultra creamy pudding. They only use the egg yolk and mix it with a heavy cream made from Hokkaido raw milk and then bake it in the oven at a low temperature to craft their mouth-watering bite-sized explosions of joy. Ho ho ho! I got in my hands the pudding of all puddings here in Ibisu. This is the perfect pudding. It comes with a packet of caramel sauce. Throw some of this caramel sauce in there. Look at that <laughs> drippy drip. Whoa! That looks amazing. Look at that right there. You press it in and it's a very, very like thick texture already. You can see how there's resistance to this. It's not just going in. See that loveliness. Whoa, that is magnificent. Mm. And a third bite. Mm. I cannot get enough of this pudding. First of all, the pudding itself is so creamy. It does have a little bit of that like egg taste, obviously, but it's not like super strong. It is sweet, just like the pudding itself, but you have this caramel sauce that's like probably on the more bitter side. So it balances out really, really well. But this pudding is so silky smooth. You can see just how like creamy that texture is just melts in your mouth and again this is one of those like street food places like there's so many cake spots and like dessert spots in Atare but this one is truly my favorite so this next spot you probably seen in one of my other videos but since we're in Ebusu I couldn't leave it out and I just have to introduce it to all of you 
and number eight, Beer Me Up at Nizo. Nizo is that friend who always picks up your call. It's a 24 seven unattended shop that provides Wagyu innards and wait for it, self-serve draft beer. All cashless, all the time. Their motto is through innards, we offer beauty and health every day. The shop interior does seem to match, but to be honest with you, I don't know about all that since I'm here to get my anytime drink on. And there you go, I got my fresh poured draft beer at this free stand where you can just come anytime 24-7 and pour a fresh draft beer. It's pretty awesome. No one's here, you can just do it anytime and you can do it at 2 in the morning, you can do it at 4 in the morning, you can do it whenever you want. So if you're in Ibisu and you want to have a drink with some friends or if you're just touring around, come here, have a free drink. Well, it's not free because you got to pay, but it is a free pour, so you get to pour it all yourself. So there you go. Those are my top food spots here in Abisu. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.